did Elliot Spitzer gone? Now, many of you will say, what the heck is Savage talking about now? Well, I'll tell you what I'm talking about now. I listened to one con man after another for the last three days. One gangster after another, speaking in nice, modulated tones after a, one after the other. And not one of them will say what the American people are demanding to hear. And that is, this was caused by criminality. We're going to get the criminals. We're going to bring in the equivalent of an Elliot Ness. And that Elliot Ness is going to find out who stole the billions, where the billions are. And these billions are going to be restored to the shareholders of these companies and to the American people. And they're going to jail and directly to jail. And we don't care if they're hiding in Yemen. We don't care if they're hiding in Switzerland. We don't care if they're hiding in Saudi Arabia or in Russia. We are going to find out which citizens did this to this country. But instead, we hear generalities. We hear John McCain saying he's for regulation. That's after he said he was against regulation. So now he's for regulation after he was against regulation. We have Obama, who's a complete idiot, saying that it's the Republicans' fault without saying what he would do if he was in charge. He's out of the picture altogether. But I want to talk about who I would hire tomorrow to straighten this mess out. There's only one man in America who I would trust. And you know why I say this? Because he was on their trail before they pulled up this hooker scandal on him to get rid of him. That's Elliot Spitzer. Now, I don't know Elliot Spitzer. He's the former attorney general, former governor of uh, New York State. But as you know, strangely, out of nowhere, Elliot Spitzer was found to have, uh, you know, visited a uh, escort service, and that was turned into a major league scandal, and God, the world came to an end. But you didn't ask yourself why this happened at the time. I did. I did. I asked you so. I asked on this show, why do you think they're going after Elliot Spitzer right now? Well, I'll give you a few answers as to why they went after Elliot Spitzer at that time. Because Elliot Spitzer was on the trail of the gangsters who just took down Wall Street. He was the only one who knew who they were. He was the one who was trying to stop it. He was the one who could have stopped it. But you see, they got him where he was weak, just like in The Godfather. If you remember in The Godfather, when the senator is compromised, he was compromised in a house of ill repute in Nevada, owned by one of the uh, family Corleone brothers, if you remember. And then he becomes owned by them. Well, that's how the movie worked out. Didn't work out this way. Many people are saying they don't know what to do. It's quoted today that Harry Reid of the Democrat Party said, nobody knows what to do. Hey, Harry, nice to meet you. I'm Michael Savage. I'm going to give you five things to do to straighten the mess out. I know what to do. You want things to do to straighten out Wall Street and the Fed and get some of the money back and to uh, straighten out the economy? Let's start with something no one's mentioned yet. Cut off all medical, educational, legal, and housing benefits to illegal aliens immediately. Now, why does Michael Savage say that? Because it's intimately involved with the collapse of America. The bums on Wall Street gave loans to buy houses to illegal aliens who had no down payment. Not because they liked illegal aliens, but because they were live bodies who they could uh, sell a mortgage to without regard to the fact that they could never pay it back. How much do you think it costs the state that you are in to support illegal aliens? I was in an emergency room last night again. That's right. Again, I was in an emergency room. Now, I don't mind that the folks in there were having a nice time and practically cooking a goat on the floor. It didn't bother me that half of them were, none of them spoke English. Didn't bother me at all. After all, I'm a compassionate man. I love the fact that I'm paying for their medical care, even though none of them were citizens. I can tell you right now. The state of California spends approximately $15 billion a year to pay for medical, educational, and legal costs associated with illegal aliens. That's the last figure I saw, which is about equal to the budget deficit of this large state. But not one governor, not one empty suit, not one empty skirt in this country, whether it be in New York or in California or in Illinois or in Florida or you name it, your state has said, you know what? We can't afford it anymore. The people were right. We're, can't, we're not pay, paying another dime. Not one more nickel is going to go to another non-citizen. There's going to be a policeman at the door of every emergency room. We're putting a cop there. If you don't have citizenship papers, we're not going to treat you. Gee, that would save about $100 billion a year right there. That's not all the money that we need right now, but that bailed, that's bailed out Freddie Mac, didn't it? Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac, $100 billion apiece. Now AIG. Where's the money going to come from? Let's start by balancing the books. How do you balance the books? 
cut off all medical, educational, legal, and housing benefits to illegal aliens immediately. Did you hear that? Now, number two, one-third of all prisoners in the United States of America are illegal aliens. Did you know that one out of three are illegal aliens? Your empty skirts and your empty suits in politics won't acknowledge that fact. If we have 1.2 million people in prison, which was the last number I saw, that means we have 400,000 people in this country in prisons who are being cared for at a cost of approximately $40,000 a year, which is about $16 billion plus hidden costs that we could recover immediately by deporting every illegal alien out of our prisons. That's correct. Deport them. So right away you see there's a little money. Now that's just starting here. That's to start with. Uh, Mr. Reed doesn't know what to do. The president doesn't know what to do. McCain doesn't know what to do. Obama doesn't know what to do. I know what to do. Cut off all money to illegal aliens. They're not citizens. They're bleeding us dry. Throw out every uh, illegal alien prisoner. They don't belong here. We can't afford them at 40 grand a year. Now I'm going to go down to the next level, the real level. I would arrest and indict and try the CEOs and CFOs of Wall Street firms suspected of financial misdeeds. Now who can do that? Do we have an Elliot Ness? We had one. His name was Elliot Spitzer. And I'm going to name names, by the way, in a few minutes on this show. I'm going to name names. I would then seize the assets of CEOs and CFOs when their chicanery is proven. I would take all of their ill-gotten gains away from them, their wives, their children, their grandmothers, their grandfathers, and turn it back to the shareholders who were robbed. Fire Chris Cox, the head of the Security Exchange Commission, which, by the way, now McCain finally called for. I called for it when? When did I call for it? I called for it last week. I was a week ahead of John McCain on that one. I said fire Chris Cox. The man is a joke. But there's more than a joke involved. I believe there was criminal negligence on the part of Christopher Cox in permitting Wall Street to rape the American economy. Hold him accountable. Who would you put in place of Chris Cox? I would, I would give Elliot Spitzer amnesty, and I put him into that job of uh, heading up the SEC. He was taken down, down by the money changers. He was the only one going after the criminals on Wall Street. Uh, number five, I would stop the Federal Reserve from bailing out multi-billion dollar companies at the taxpayers' expense. We have become a third world nation under George Bush. Now, I told you six months ago, I told you six months ago that he wasn't through with us yet. I told you that he was not yet through with us yet. He gave us, uh, at the beginning of his career, had nothing to do with it, of course, but strangely enough, we've gone from 9-11 to 9-15 in a mere eight years. All under the watch of one man, George W. Bush. The buck stops there. Now, here's the question for you, another question. Now, there's not only one, but there's several questions. Uh, it's interesting to me that he doesn't know what to do. He has no idea who to put on Wall Street to investigate who may have robbed uh, the, the shareholders. Remember, remember this very clearly. When you hear that people, that money has been lost, there's human beings out there who are broke now who were not bad people. They were average people. Not only did they lose jobs, they lost their investments in so many companies. But somebody benefited. Many bodies have benefited. Many girls of these people have benefited. Why they have, I told you, jokingly, not so jokingly, a few months ago, these people were so fat on what they robbed off Wall Street that they were giving uh, Gulfstream 3s to their maids. They had a Gulfstream 5, of course. But they gave the Gulfstream 3 to their favorite maid. They gave away their old Gulfstream 2 to their maid's maid. They gave away an old Gulfstream 1 to their jockey. That's how bad it had gone.